Hey, this is how to do vertex colors, or uh, if you're coming from the main uh, C2 creation series, this is how to uh, actually do vertex colors and not have it uh, mess up ReStudio. Or Brawlbox, maybe. I haven't tried it with Procreate Brawlbox. Uh, anyways, uh, this is, let's just get into it. So, vertex colors allow you to do wonderful stuff like this, or uh, on as you can see on Noclip, this is Dry Dry Runes without, uh, with Vertex Colors, and this is Sandy Runes without Vertex Colors. So Vertex Colors are highly attractive. Uh, you can do wonderful beach scenes like this, obviously with more finesse than, than this, but the basics are you need to set up this node shader. So let me just walk you through. Control right click to remove those. And let me just hit X to delete, Shift A to add, S to pull up the search menu, uh, and then mix RGB. And then we're gonna plug the color node in here. We're gonna change this from mix to multiply. We're going to set the factor to one and we're gonna set it to clamp. Then we're gonna uh, pull up the search menu again, Shift A and then S. And then we're gonna select vertex colors or in 3.2 it's color attribute. So we're gonna hit the default color if you notice uh, on this green triangle, we have our vertex, there should just be one layer. If there's not, what you can do is select everything, control J to join them all together, and then remove, and then uh, remove them all, and then just add it back. And then you can uh, uh, tab into edit mode, A to select everything, P to separate by material. And now if we go into the sand, we see this one uh, vertex colors layer, and we're good. Uh, yeah, so now we're going to plug this back into our base color. And uh, we see we have, since we deleted all our vertex colors, the previous vertex colors were gone. So let's paint that in. So we go, uh, we have to be in shading uh, and not in the layout editor because uh, you'll see that right now we're only displaying textures, whereas here we're displaying both. Um, and this uh, shader, uh, or shading workspace allows us to see the nodes, which is nice. So now we go into vertex paint mode. Um, you know, you can hit tab to go into edit mode, but you can also go to uh, select it, edit mode from here, but we're gonna go to vertex paint and we're gonna select maybe a darker, darker color here. And we're just gonna paint this in here. Something like that looks good. And then we're gonna select this lighter blue color and we're gonna bring it along here. And uh, yeah, and then maybe for some color variation, we're gonna throw in even a darker blue over here just to make it look really nice. And maybe if we want to mix this better, we're gonna select this and we're going to change down the strength. And we might also, ah, that, that might work. We might also uh, uh, go into, instead of mix, we might try to do uh, um, some other thing, like draw. Um, although now we're on this white color, so let's go back to our yellow, and you can see us drawing over top of that, and not, not you know, blending per se. So that's, yeah, that's how you do, that's how you do vertex colors. Um, so now I'm going to uh, some other things. So this fall off, this is another of the most useful things. You can see if I paint one vertex, uh, if I change the fall off to be something looking like this, you can see if I paint one vertex, it does it insanely much. Sorry, that was worded horribly. But you can see I paint one vertex and everything else gets you know selected a lot. Whereas if I go down to my normal, linear interpolation, I see, you know, some, some things, whereas if I go down to here, then I get barely, barely anything. And this is how you get really subtle vertex colors. Um, right. And then uh, the other thing, yeah, obviously is the strength to play around with is this mode, is the color, is this here. The other thing to talk about is how do I do vertex alpha? So this is what I would say, I want to have, uh, if I pull up, sorry, I don't have this prepared, but if I uh, go to Mario Kart Wii, and if I go to Mushroom Gorge, you can see uh, uh, that, oh, hey, there's this wonderful transition. What's happening here is that there is a plane on top of this, you know, 
uh, cave texture and it's coming slightly over top of this ground texture and then what's happening is they're fading it out they're painting it alpha um, and so to, uh, to show you what that looks like here uh, we have to go into this material properties panel here and we're going to scroll down until we uh, and let's uh, go and select uh, our sand object. Yep, make sure that's selected. And we're going to make the, sure this blend mode is set to alpha hashed. Alpha blend also works. However, uh, I have had issues with uh, Blender and uh, knowing uh, what should draw first and getting some weird effects. So alpha hashed um, is, yeah, what I would do. And uh, now we're going to select this alpha and put it into the alpha. So what's happening is this is the output, right? So here's our, te you know, our texture is getting put into the color of this material. And then we also have this vertex uh, color controlling the alpha. So we're gonna paint in our alpha channel. So how do we do that? Well, when we go in here, you see we have, oh, hey, add alpha, erase alpha. I forget which one is which. Uh, and it doesn't really matter the color, but uh, now you can see me drawing in. Oh, hey, I'm now actually able to see through onto the other side. You know, this is actually adding alpha. So, uh, yeah, and, you know, you can change this fall off so, you know, it's not very little at the time. It's, oh, hey, now I don't see anything. Oh, that's interesting. And you can see this alpha hashed is giving this sort of Gaussian noise, whereas if I do alpha blend, I get a much smoother blend, but at the same time, it could have issues if there's stuff behind it or not. So alpha hashed. Right, so that is vertex alpha. Uh, and you might be like, great, now let's export. The, the thing you need to make sure before you export is that uh, you, you control right click these and you only have the color into the base color. So you can't see your vertex colors anymore. And it kind of sucks, um, but when you import it into Brawlbox, uh, make sure you set add colors to true, but ReStudio should you know, automatically recognize the vertex colors and vertex alpha and set stuff accordingly. Uh, and you can see if the vertex colors worked. If not, just go back here, make some edits, and then just see what it looks like immediately in ReStudio. That way you're not you know, making the whole thing and then going back and tweaking it. But anyways, uh, and then when you just want to see it again, you know, it's still the same mix RGB to the multiply to the vertex color and then this color into the base color. And now you can see your stuff again. All right, so that's vertex colors. I hope that helps some of you. And uh, yeah, all right.